In this presentation I will talk about the control scheme for EMI reduction via spread spectrum modulation for triangular current mode operated DC-DC converters. This presentation should initially take place at the SIPS 2020 in Berlin in March and therefore the slides are the same as in the virtual conference which took place there but uh, the in-person uh, meeting did not take place therefore I'm distributing this presentation in this way. Uh, what I will talk about uh, first I will look at why we need this operation scheme and then I will briefly describe what is triangular current mode operation as I understand it in this uh, presentation. Then I will propose my operating scheme for spread spectrum modulation and show uh, with measurement results that uh, this is feasible and uh, we can use this to reduce EMI and maintain zero water switch. Um, first the motivation why do we use um, or why do we uh, search such an operating scheme? Basically, we always strive for um, small converter size, high density power converters, um, and uh, two major limiting factors are EMI and efficiency. Here, um, in recent years, um, zero voltage switching operation with triangular current mode has been proposed to lower the losses and to uh, allow the use of small inductors um, to achieve these goals of um, high power density. Also the EMI performance will be improved if we use a zero water switching, but it can be further improved if we could implement a spread spectrum modulation. A problem is uh, in particular with this um, triangular current mode operation that it relies on the variable switching frequency as control variable. Therefore it's difficult to integrate a simple uh, spread spectrum modulation um, as for example in DC DC converters, standard DC DC converters we can just change the switching frequency randomly and the duty cycle is the control variable. Therefore, the question was is it possible to achieve a spread spectrum modulation in the case of a triangular current mode DC DC converter. I would like to um, look at the basic triangular current mode converter as it's shown here. Here on the right side we see the converter with two switches. In a triangular current mode converter we have a standard DC-DC converter where the diode is replaced by a synchronous rectifier switch and this switch is driven in a way that the current gets negative. Therefore it's not turned off when the switching period is at its end. It's um, turned off if we reach a negative current of E min and this current um, is set to such a value that we can fully discharge the parasitic capacitance connected to this node with the negative current and therefore allowing a lossless turn on of switch TH, the high side switch as we can see here. Therefore uh, if you look here um, the lower traces here are the control waveforms, the blue trace is the midpoint voltage and the red trace is the inductor current in its triangular current mode. The inductor current has this triangular shape as the name implies, but um, we have a varying switching frequency and turn off if we reach E min and this discharges the capacitances so that the inverse diode of the high side transistor will turn on at this time T5 and then at T6 the transistor can be turned on with zero voltage switching. To achieve this here um, the equation is given for the minimum inductor current and um, if we control the converter so that we turn off if we reach this minimum current then we have a um, variable frequency operation which depends on the output voltage, input voltage, inductor value, this minimum value and the output current in this case. And therefore we can see the switching frequency is not independent but dependent on the output current is our control variable and therefore it's difficult to achieve CVS together with a spread spectrum modulation because we would change our output power. Now what's the basic idea? If you look at the current waveform, the waveform uh, can be interpreted as follow. We have two values for the current which 
define the, the current wave from the maximum value and the minimum value. The minimum value is required to achieve CVS and the maximum value will be changed depending on the average output current. Therefore, a higher a maximum value um, is required if we have a higher output current as then the average inductor current has to be higher. A very simple operating scheme to achieve an automatic CVS operation is if we have some uh, hysteresis controller which turns off the main switch if we reach IMAX and which turns off the low side switch if we hit I min. And uh, now the basic idea is uh, what would happen if we random modulate the thresholds of this controller uh, in a way that the output current should be constant. Here now a basic implementation is shown how this can be done. We rely here on a two loop controller. We have an inner current controller, hysteresis controller, which forces the zero voltage switching operation. And we have an outer voltage controller, which um, controls the output voltage and therefore sets the limits for the inner current controller. Basically uh, this output Voltage controller is a digital controller which sets the thresholds via two digital to analog converters for the inner current controller. The maximum set value Emax is depending on the required output voltage. Therefore, it's increasing if we need more output current and uh, maintain the output voltage. And the minimum value is essentially depending um, on the capacitor's uh, inductor value and input voltage to achieve a CVS. And now the basic idea is we have here additional the calculation of a random sequence and the random signal is added to both of this threshold. Here to the set point regarding the output voltage and on the other hand to the um, set point regarding the CVS operation. Therefore, we have a random sequence, the delta EL, um, which is added to the normal values to change this operating mode. And this will lead to a change in frequency. Basically, there are two operating schemes uh, presented here, unidirectional modulation and bidirectional modulation. These are shown on the right side um, here in the upper part, the unidirectional modulation and in the lower part, the bidirectional modulation for comparison uh, in both cases in red, the original waveform of this inner current is shown in the unidirectional modulation, just one threshold, the IMAX threshold is set and modulated. So in subsequent uh, cycles, we have different random modulated values, and this will lead to an increase of the switching period and therefore to the required change in frequency. And in general, um, this sequence which changes these values will be chosen in a way so that its average value is zero and therefore the average output current should be the same. In the bidirectional modulation, the basic idea is to modulate both thresholds. I max and I min by the same amount of delta EL. Uh, the advantage is we get here too an increase in the switching period and after a changing switching frequency, but the change in EL average will be minimized and uh, ideally there will be no change in uh, average inductor current if we increase the maximum value by the same value delta IL as we change the minimum value in this way. This can be shown if one calculates the values for the average inductor current for both unidirectional and bidirectional operation in um, the unidirectional operation. One can see that uh, the original thresholds plus this random sequence will define the average current. Therefore, the average current will change almost in the same way how this um, random modulated signal will change. But in the bidirectional current modulation, the average value of the original signal and the modulated signal will be the same. Although in both cases, as can be seen here for the relative frequency variation, we get uh, in both cases a change in switching frequency. Therefore, the bidirectional modulation should be ideally let the 
average inductor current unchanged and we should have no low frequency oscillation in the output voltage. To validate this concept, a basic prototype was built as shown here on the right side. It's controlled by a microcontroller. We have here a half bridge board and here's the output inductor, input capacitor, a current sense amplifier as we rely on the measured current and all the control circuit is implemented in this mixed signal microcontroller and here we see the basic waveforms for three different operating modes. Here on the left side we see the operation without any modulation. This is a standard triangular current mode operation and the thresholds are just set um, by the average output current, the IMAX threshold and the IMIN threshold is set to achieve CVS. We can see here the blue trace is the uh, output voltage variations. It's more or less constant, just this normal high frequency ripple, which is here shown. Um, then in the middle, we have the unidirectional modulation. As can be seen here, just the upper threshold is varied. And this causes here um, random modulation or some random walk in the output voltage variation as if we increase here for several subsequent switching cycles the average value then the output voltage will increase as the current value will increase in its average uh, also the output voltage will increase and therefore here decrease and we get a low frequency output voltage variation where in contrast if we employ the bidirectional modulation where we uh, change both thresholds high and low then we will more or less get the same variation as here without modulation but as can be seen the high frequency ripple increases as we have more uh, ripple in the inductor current therefore uh, cvs can be maintained we get a larger ripple but no low frequency noise when bidirectional modulation is employed. Another measurement result is shown uh, on this slide. Um, we see on the left side what we have already discussed, the random output uh, voltage uh, variations with out modulation, unidirectional modulation and bidirectional modulation compared in a single diagram. And we can see that the unidirectional modulation will lead to a large increase in this low frequency ripple amplitude uh, about um, two and a half times larger than without modulation and with uh, bidirectional modulation we just get a slight increase therefore the low frequency output voltage variations due to uh, this random change in switching thresholds can be um, compensated by this bidirectional modulation scheme. Another effect is uh, if we random modulate our converter, this will lead to a decrease in efficiency. We will get more losses as um, we get larger currents, larger RMS currents and larger change in the man magnetic field, for example, of the inductor and also uh, larger MS counts of uh, the both switches. Therefore, as we can see here, uh, if we just have the red curve um, converter without any modulation, we have the highest efficiency and with bidirectional modulation with increasing amplitude of the random signal, uh, we get an increase uh, in the losses and therefore a decreasing efficiency. Therefore, this blue curve has the largest amplitude of the additional random signal and the black curve has somewhat lower uh, excursion in this random value. And we can see that there has to be a, some sort of trade-off between um, the random modulation and the, the efficiency. Another measurement is shown. We see on the upper right um, the test setup. Uh, the converter is tested uh, for the EMI emissions, uh, therefore uh, connected to a load operated from a DC source and both lines from the DC source to the converter are fed through uh, two line impedance stabilizing networks and both noise voltages are measured using a common mode differential mode separator and also the measured combined noise voltage from one of these line impedance stabilizing networks is measured and these were measured using a spectrum analyzer and the results are shown here in the lower three figures. For explanation the red traces 
always show a converter without any modulation. The black trace with a low threshold for delta EL and the blue trace with a higher threshold of delta EL. As can be seen in all these different noise voltages, we see a decrease in the peak amplitude and a um, larger variation of um, the random signal leads to a larger decrease in the peak amplitude as well as the combined noise com mode or differential mode noise. And we can also see the frequency is lowered as the period of our switching cycle is extended by uh, adding this additional random signal to the inner current thresholds. Therefore, we can see uh, the peak level of emissions is reduced as expected and also um, the spread spectrum is uh, achieved as the switching frequency is here varied and therefore noise is spread to a larger frequency range and the peak value is therefore reduced. In conclusion, we can sum up the following things. Uh, we have seen a zero water switching operation is also possible with a sped spectrum frequency modulation. Um, although the switching frequency is the control variable in a triangular current mode converter if we employ the scheme presented here. Um, two different modulation schemes were proposed and uh, one of them was very favorable. This was the bidirectional modulation scheme which suppresses low frequency output voltage variations which would be otherwise present. The EMI signature can be greatly improved of the converter as shown by the measurements we um, could decrease the combined noise voltage as well as COM and uh, differential mode noise but we see that uh, modulation will generally result in lower efficiency as conduction and inductor losses will increase um, and therefore a trade-off between EMI reduction and losses has to be taken into account. If you have any questions, um, write me an email. You can see my email address 